Okay, I want to do a video response for a couple questions uh, as a result of uh, 8.14.8b, uh, uh, where I spoke. Um, Odin asked if I had uh, ever planted uh, watermelons, and yes, I had a couple what they call tiger stripes. I took them already. Um, they weren't as sweet as they could have been, um, but they were plenty juicy. Uh, I, from what I understand, um, the hotter and if there's a dry spell or two uh, during the watermelon grow season, uh, it will be sweeter. I don't know. That's just what some local folks have told me. Um, farmers, you know. Clearly, I'm not a farmer. Um, and in my video, I didn't mean to imply that I knew what the hell was going on. I only know what not to do because of the mistakes I've made. Um, there are a couple things I, I have learned um, the hard way. Um, in a response to, um, I think it was uh, Hippie uh, K1 or KI, uh, Hippie KI asked about setup. And the only thing I can say about setup and specifics with regard to keeping the fish happy, um, they can become stressed due to weather, due to cold fronts, due to rainstorms, um, due to uh, you having the system turned up uh, to an accelerated rate. Um, and in that regard, I would like to go into the break-in or the setup or startup or adding fish to a newly designed setup system. Um, one, one of the things that you need to know is most important and that I can illustrate by virtue of my failures and mistakes was when I began this uh, in late March, early April, um, I got the tank, I set up one bed, I got my beneficial bacteria or the denitrifying um, bacteria um, that helps break down the fish cycle, the poop cycle, and uh, I added them both. When I went and got the fish was um, just regular bait fish that you get from your local bait fish store. Uh, not anything fancy. Disposable fish or seed fish as we call them. And um, what I failed to realize was that the temperatures outside were not warm enough to encourage a culture or the bacteria actually growing. So my mistake was I went and got fish, I went and put the bacteria in the beds and then didn't count on the temperature. I left these fish and this bacteria in this bed for almost a month and when it finally became warm enough for the active culture to begin to work and to build um, a culture for the fish, a bacteria culture that would enable, that would be able to break down the amount of fish load or waste from the newly inserted fish, I needed to pay more attention to the temperature. So what in essence I did was build a biological bomb because when everything heated up, that's when of course I went and got the new fish, 200 catfish. 200 catfish and five dozen minnows that I had put in there for maybe a month ahead of time. And the minnows are of course the pit bull, as I've come to learn, the pit bull of all fish. They can handle the worst conditions, blah, 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 blah. There are still minnows in there. but. I just wanted to let you know that I killed 200 fish when I started this because of the little mistake of being more concerned about the actual habitation of the fish and their physical environment temperature wise when I, needed, when I initially loaded the primary load. Um, I built a biological bomb. The water heated up, the fish started to eat well, the fish started to poop well. There was 30 days of poop in the beds that had not been broken down because there was no culture. And, and in essence, everything went hogwash, hogwa hog wild, uh, with explosion of chemicals. It's going to take you between four and six weeks for your beds or your bacteria to culture. So if you can do a fishless cycle, 
that would be best. A fishel cycle is where you go and get, and you can look this up on the internet and on YouTube, a fishless cycle. You can use products that you buy from the fish store, but mind you, this, those are aquarium fish and everything's going to be expensive and small because you're doing 10 to 50 gallons. Some of us that are in aquaponics have, you know, 1,000 gallon tanks, 2,000 gallon tanks. So if you're talking about 50 dry drops, <laughs> it, for 40 bucks, it's going to cost you a fortune. So you have to try to find ulterior ways. Um, many people use ammonia, pure ammonia, with no soap, no petroleum products. So if you can find a pure ammonia, then you can use, because that's nothing more than what the poop is, pure ammonia. If you can pour pure ammonia in your pool or your tank six weeks before you go and get any fish, add your beneficial bacteria, then you will go through the cycle safely and convert the filters and convert the, and begin the biological process without the fish so you can avoid any stress to them. All these fish have these types of ailments. They're just their immune systems are, are very strong to protect against it. Uh, think of it as an AIDS patient. They uh, ha are HIV, but they don't get full-blown AIDS, I suppose, I'm not for sure, until their immune system fails. When their immune system begins to fail, that's when all these ailments pop up. And I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just telling you about the fish. When their nervous system gets to a certain point, anything negative gram rod related will attack their bodies. That's the best I can say it. So another thing when you're starting a system is you want to buy fish that are indigenous to your area because you'll want to ensure the easiest amount of care for them. If you get a tropical fish and you live in Canada it's going to be difficult. So you want to get a fish that's going to be from your area or that can handle the fresh water that's in your area, the normal water that's in your area. So you don't have to heat or place your tank indoors or, or something along those lines. As far as the healthy portion of the fish, it's in delicate balance with regard to photosynthesis. The better the plants can photosynthesize, and the amount of nitrogen and nitrates that they can absorb allows you to feed the fish a greater volume of food, hence a greater volume of waste. So it takes time to build the culture in the beds, and it takes time for the plants to grow to an adequate amount of absorption. So what happens is you either have to plus and minus plants. When you first begin, you can have as many plants as you want, but they might not grow well. They might not there might not be enough nutrients because you haven't uh, or, uh, attained a level of processing in the beds. Now the fish may even starve in this beginning period of time. You've got to be very careful. That's why I'm an advocate now for a fishless cycle. Uh, after killing 200 fish myself, um, you know, it's not the money, it's the husbandry. You know, it's the time, the energy, the 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 heart that you put into the setup and then to have kill all these fish I mean yeah they're fish but you know I was responsible you're responsible so it's kinda kinda weird and that's I guess what I was trying to say in the video before not that I knew anything or that I could help anybody really I could only illustrate what I did wrong so that other folks might avoid those mistakes um, that's it that I can think of. We're talking 8 minutes and 59 seconds. There's the testing, there's the specific numbers, but you can get that out of the uh, API Master uh, Aquarium Test Kit. Um, the process is ammonia, then to nitrites, and then finally on to nitrates, which the plants take up, um, and the amount of uh, nitrates that the plants take up based on their size and their ability to photosynthesize um, the amount of sun. Okay, that's about all I have. Uh, some big trees. I don't get much sun. Maybe from 10, 20 to maybe 2.30 or 3. That's about it. Okay. Wow, this is long. Thanks.